Hi there, I'm Patrick from the stadium at hoo-ha.my and I'm currently at the Sepang Go-Kart circuit. As you can see behind me, there are some teams preparing for the uh, Rotex Invitational, where teams from Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore and Indonesia do come down here and uh, practice before the season starts. Now, the reason why we are here is, no, at one point or another, we do get the chance of feeling like we want to be in motorsport, want to be like a motor racing champion. But when you tell that to your parents, they have raised eyebrows simply because it is an expensive sport. So we come here to speak to one driver, one parent and his team principal on what it takes to actually break through into motorsport. So you're going to ask him about getting into this motorsport business. So Connor, you know, why did you actually pick up motorsport? Oh, because of my cousin. Uh, he started racing when he was uh, 16 in Formula Ford. And then after I watched him on a track day, so uh, I decided to go go-kiting. I decided to get a team to run me for one day to see how it was. So, And uh, since then, you know, I digged it. So. I also heard that you had the opportunity to become an uh, Olympic swimmer, but unfortunately there were not enough pools in Ireland. But how did you actually fall in love? What was it that made you fall in love with motorsport? Was it the adrenaline or was it you know, something that you picked up very easily? It was a glamorous lifestyle and uh, at any sport to be the best. And you have to be very fit, so I took the attribute of swimming because I had to be very fit for swimming to, to motorsport. Uh, so I adapted very well to driving a car. So, so any, any parent would understand that if you want to get into motorsport, it's it's an expensive hobby. You know, but but do you actually realize the magnitude of the sacrifice and of course the commitment your dad and the family and the, and the rest of the team put into you? Uh, yeah, I know. But uh, when you get victory, it pays it all back in in one big chunk. Uh, I know it's a lot of money, but uh, if you do well, maybe sponsors might pick you up. Uh, so that's very good for in terms of publicity for you. And so it's not very financially strained on your parents, so it's okay after maybe a year if you get too good, so it's okay. But looking around here at this uh, Rotex Invitational, you got drivers from all over the place. Uh, I mean, your peers, someone, people who are younger than you, younger than 17, 18, uh, some a little older, but they're from Thailand, Singapore. You do understand that the probability of succeeding is just so, so little, that it's just the cream of the crop that actually rises up. Yeah. So, so do you fancy your chances with, among the peers here? Yeah, yes, uh, we're, we're doing very well at the moment, you know, the teams work very hard on development of uh, chassis, engines and uh, publicity for the drivers. So uh, I'm looking very forward to 2011, So, because uh, we got the rights to, we represent all of Asia, so that opens our platform to everyone. So maybe next year, maybe go to Europe for a few races. So I'm looking forward to take on. So. Right, I'm now with uh, Carl. He's Connor's dad. But uh, we need to find out what actually goes through a, a parent's mind, you know, when your son has such an expensive hobby. Could you just, if you can, articulate to us the, the sacrifice and also the commitment that, that you put in in order for Connor to have this opportunity in motorsport? Well, Connor is, uh, I suppose, is an unusual child in some ways in that he's... It's not just a dream, it's, it's passion for him and uh, it's rare that you find someone of his age so determined uh, and so focused uh, you know, on what he wants to do with his career. So it would be a little bit remiss of us as parents to not to at least try and give him that opportunity to see if he can uh, develop the opportunity and see if he can become, uh, fulfill his dream. As I said, it's, it's more about, it's, it's, it's his life at the moment rather than a dream, uh, to be truthful. So, yes, there are sacrifices, but I mean, I would necessary, wouldn't necessarily say that the ones I wouldn't otherwise give to make it work for him. So we're more than happy, myself and my wife are more than happy to give him that opportunity. So. And, and going through it, what does it mean to you to actually see him out there in the track, making the laps, making the cut, uh, uh, participating in a race? What does it mean to you? Well, I suppose, for me, it's it's great. I mean, obviously, I get great enjoyment, great pleasure. A little bit nervous at times because, obviously, it's a contact sport. Well, it's not, technically, it's not a contact sport, but it can be at times. Uh, but, obviously, I get a little bit nervous about it. So, I suppose, at the beginning of a race, I get the, the butterflies, like everybody else, as if I'm competing myself. But it's great. I mean, I have to say, I get great pleasure. And it's, it, you know, there's a huge sense of enjoyment about the whole thing. Uh, so, absolutely. And, and, you know, and to see him... Uh, you know, moving up the grid, competing, to taking his opportunities when they come. Um, I mean, 
more than I would ever do, to be, to be perfectly truthful, I would never do it in a million years. But to see him do it and to have the courage to do it and the courage of his commitments, wonderful, absolutely, great. gives me great pleasure. Of course, at the moment that we are doing this interview, uh, the officials are scrutinizing all the other cards taking part in the afternoon race. So that just leaves me to ask you a couple more questions. What did it mean to you to see him actually break through the big time corner, breaking through the big time? What did it mean to you? Well, as you know, to try and do that is, is very difficult. I mean, it's highly competitive for a start. But I think first and foremost, far beyond it for me, for my own personal, for Connor to be able to achieve that is, would be just amazing. Um, and to be able to fulfill his dreams. I mean, in whatever shape or form that might be, you know, a lot of people, as you know, will end up maybe going into Formula One, some will go into further other, you know, Formula BMW, some will go into NASCAR. So it's the fact that he can actually pursue his dream and turn it into a career, that, that's fulfilling enough for me. I mean, obviously, as I said, it's, you know, it's great that I can, I can participate and be here, but uh, I think that's the most fulfilling thing for me is just to see him pursue his dream. And seeing him pursue that dream since the age of 12, 13 years old, and now we've just started the new year, mm. what would be your three list on a wish list? Uh, for him to obviously become achieve, become a Formula One driver, high expectations indeed. But certainly, if you were able to do that, uh, from obviously for us as a family, being able to see him achieve that, uh, I mean, it gives us great pleasure as well. But I think first, mostly for me to be able to see that Connor fulfills his dream, establishes his targets, you know, um, it might be unusual to say, but for Connor, he's very focused. I mean, to the point that he might be uh, so focused that he pushes everything else aside. But if you look at other kids of his age, uh, certainly, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not sure about what they want to do, whereas Connor's very focused. And the fact that, that he's, he's that um, organized, uh, it's great, and you know, for us, as I said, for us to be able to see him develop and hopefully achieve his goal is, is the ultimate wish list for me. I mean, I don't have that many, to be honest with you. So, I mean, he's, he's great, he's great, you know, and it's good that we're, we have the good fortune to be able to do this for him, so. All right, great. Thanks a lot. Nice meeting with you. All right, thank you so much. Yes. All right, I'm now with uh, Nick Irwan. He's actually the team principal of the CRG Junior Team Asia and also he's pretty much Corner's manager. So thanks for taking time out and talking to us on this busy time. Now tell us, this is like a, a breakthrough edition for drivers coming through the ranks. So what actually does it take to to make it in this, in this series? Yeah, I mean, uh, f for a start, of course, the drivers must have certain experience. You know, they got to be, they have to be uh, starting from the from the basics, maybe from the cadet cadet class uh, for under 12 years old, and then you know, some, someone like Connor, then he moves up to the juniors, and then to the seniors. Yeah, of course, uh, the, you need you need you need you need money to, to be in this in the in the to do this to do this sport. Uh, different parents, different drivers have different kind of support. Some parents, servants make the sponsorship. Sometimes they have their own uh, sponsorship from. Uh, private private sectors uh, government government or so it, it it is really important you know uh, for the driver uh, for the sponsors for the for the parents to be ready for this because it's not just about the about the sport you know it's just it's also about the preparation uh, about you know the money involved uh, the commitment involved because of course the, the boys have school so like, uh, like like a driver like Connor he spends a lot of time uh, practicing which is uh, very important in this sport. Now you are an accomplished go-kart winner yourself. You competed in many go-kart races and now you're mentoring the junior guys to come through. What's a journey like for a driver and a mentor bringing them through the ranks? Well, I have to say, you know, it's, it's a very tough place to be, you know, um, to do what Connor is doing now. I mean, just to go around, around, around laps, it's easy, but you know, to be to be at your limit, to be consistent at every lap, uh, it's another task, you know. Uh, that, that makes a difference between uh, Fernando Alonso or uh, someone at the back of the grid, you know. Uh, and then, of course, the experience too, you know, you got to be competing in the right championships, in the, in the right level of series. So, I mean, what we're doing now is the highest level in, in Asia, but of course, when you go to uh, uh, Europe, it's another, it's another different matter again, you know, it's, it's something like you play football in, in the Asian League and then you play in the World Cup, it's, it's, it's two different things, you know. So, you know, to be in Formula 1 is very tough, you know, you so many good drivers around and, you know, in, in Formula 1 they have 22 drivers on the grid and then you have 22 championship winners from, from the Junior Series, so they are best of the best. So, it's, so the, the, these boys, you know, of course they, they will do their best, you know, they, they, uh, you know everybody deserves, deserves a chance, but the, the, the route the road to the, to the top is it's not easy, you know, you need, you need a lot of support and uh, commitment. 
Yeah, you're saying also, everybody looks towards Formula 1 as the top where you can reach, but there are other racing classes as well, you know, like your NASCAR, other, other, other racing series. But you're talking about cost just now. Should the cost actually deter or stop parents from actually sending a kid who has passion for sports or motorsport? Well, well, this, this sport, uh, you know, it costs a lot of money for sure. But uh, if parents... You know, there's some parents that uh, that 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 just uh, they're wealthy. There, there's some with a lot of support, you know. But what I'm trying to say is that I you know I, I I it's a fact that this sport is you need money. It's expensive sport, you know. But uh, but it shouldn't deter the parents because some parents can't afford to do it, you know. Uh, some parents are good at, at finding sponsors. Some managers are good at finding sponsors. Some teams are good at finding sponsors. Some drivers are really good, really good drivers. They they can get sponsors on their own. So it's. So that, 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 that's, that's the kind of thing, that, that positivity that we should look at, you know, and, and that's why Connor is today here today, you know, that's why uh, the, the, the drivers here, the, the, the good drivers are here in the team today. Yeah. Okay. Now let's just get uh, cut the chase and get straight to the point. Um, how's been Connor's progress so far from what you've seen? Well, well, Connor, I, I, I have to say, Connor deserves a chance, you know. Um, he's, you know, he really loves the sport, you know. I mean, I mean, of course, uh, you know, he, he's still inexperienced many ways. Even though he came from Europe racing, but you know, Asia has gone up a, a lot, a lot. Uh, the 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 level of racing, so. Connor, Connor is still learning, you know, at the end of the day, but uh, you give him another one or two years, he'll be, he'll be very good. He, he would have a chance to, to win races, but for sure now it's, it's for him to, to learn. Um, and, and the good thing is that he really likes the sport, you know, he really works for it. You know, he, he comes, you know, he's always on it and he wants, he wants to do it. So, so that's a good start. And you being a very experienced person and you look around, we've got some great drivers from Thailand, Singapore, around the region, and there's Connor getting ready for his race in the afternoon. One final question. Does he have what it takes to make it or not? From, from, from your experience? I've seen a, a person who started uh, like him, who went on very far. So, but I've seen some drivers that, that may be better than him at the moment, but they didn't make it far. So, so that's that's my answer. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's just hard to predict. You know, but the good thing is that the boy is serious and the par the parents are serious, and then he has uh, he has some sponsors lining up uh, in the future. So I think I think people should look into him in the, in, the, in the next few months. But but like I said to you, I've seen drivers that not not as good as him and went on far in driving Formula One now, or some uh, making some other series or some. And even there is some that they just don't make it. So it's, it's, a, it's a question mark, but it's a good start. So there you have it. We spoke to an upcoming uh, Malaysian-born uh, driver, Connor O'Brien, together with his dad, and also Nick Irwan, his uh, team principal. So pretty much it all boils down to passion and commitment. And of course, a lot of sacrifice from the parents. But with all having said that, what would be an ideal driver's dream to actually reach the heights of motorsport? Let's find out from Connor. What is it that you want to achieve this year, next year? Well, I at least want to win two races this year and definitely finishing in the top seven all the time because that's where I should be because I'm performing that and the team is performing very well at the moment. So I don't expect any less from that, especially from me, not the team. They give me 100% every time. So, you know, it's all up to me at the end of the day, no one else. And long-term ambition, what, is it the ultimate being in Formula 1 or is there any other race classes that you'd like to yeah. take part? Yes, I'd love to be in Formula 1, but it's a very long, long road. So next year, Formula BMW, Asia, and then after that, I'll see, see where I progress to. But mostly, likely, single-seaters, yeah. So uh, it's going to be very hard to, to get up, but uh, if I get good sponsorship, I'll be okay. So just need to perform very well in go-karts. So get results and I'll be okay.